Hey there, YouTube. It's Rob here. Part 5 of Shadowrun Returns. This time we're going to see some freaking combat. Oh yeah. Alright, so we'll just load up my file right now. That's right, again, karma. So let's spend that karma. What did I want to do again? Let's see, so I have four left. Yeah, I'm going to raise my... Quickness, and I think I'm gonna raise my SMG a couple of levels. So either I do a little more damage, maybe gain a special attack. left for next time. Get, turn this volume down a little bit. This is actually louder than I thought. There. Okay, so... so this current area here actually plays out more like a... This, like a, this whole area is like a battle here, so this, that's kind of cool. Alright, I'm going to step forward. I'm just going to go against... The, go up against the wall here, rather than reveal any terror. Oh man, this music is great. Okay, so there's enemies kicking around. Ah, right up there. Hmm. Just spray and pay to it. Oh man, I'm using a rifle, not a submachine gun. Shit. Oh. I don't have the spray and pay one yet anyway, I don't think. Well, let's shoot the sucker. Paco, you need the same shield that I'll put spray and pay on him. Okay, I'm gonna have to move up, up a little bit. Whoa. This is like the, the main chatter run theme I remixed. I never noticed that. Oh yeah, spray bay is pretty cool. Stevie J. Use magic on me. I knew there was another dude. A raspy man of voice booms over the Penos PA system. You really think you can come here and shoot up my place? Do you know who I am? I know who you are. You're the guy I'm gonna kill. Oh yeah, 90% chance of close combat, and I missed this fucker. Okay, I'm gonna turn spray and pay off so I can kill this guy. Oh yeah. Oh, there's the mage over there, okay. Crank out from over here. Maybe not. Apparently, my guy fucking sucks. Okay, well, I'm gonna pack up, I'm gonna reload. I should be able to move and melee Stevie J here. Yeah. I gotta get rid of that fucking mage. I shoot him. Ah. The pockets. My. Well, actually, yeah, I should be able to. Shit, I should be able to, be able to hit him with. hit both of them with spray and pay, actually. Nope. Range him again. Ah, Paco, you suck. Ah, Swift Runner, you suck. And we'll turn spray and pay off and we'll shoot this guy. How do you have a 68% chance at point blank range? 
just use a mid pack. Oh, stupid asshole. Oh yeah, that's right, I don't. Can I reach on one yet? There we go, that's a little better. Not enough ammo to shoot once. Jesus. Well, let's reload. Okay, it's two attacks, plus a chance for critical, that's what it was. Oh. Okay, well, I'm sure doing that. Oh, 95% chance I better start taking him. Fuck is it? There we go. Turn spray and pay off. There we go. No, I can't! And with a bloody gurgle, Stevie J is no more. Of course, there's still this asshole left. Just gonna move Paco to strike range. Likewise, I'm gonna move my guy to strike range to increase the chance of hitting him with my range attack. What? Okay, good, that didn't use up a turn, but that still sucked. Gun. Oh, you asshole! I flipped on you. There we go. And it's still going, it's still combat, so they might. Oh yeah, there's still a little more. For that. <coughs> this item is Stevie J's passcode. Let's move over this way and check to see if there's anything. I can use them there. Let's move a little further into Stevie J's apartment. Uh, I should also reload, I suppose. Let's move this further up. Just here. Oh, there's Hellhounds there. Them. The room beyond the bars is a stinking jumble of burned flesh and dog flaw. An enormous hellhound, its first streak of whip marks, growls low. The eyes of a second hellhound burn menacingly in a corner, shoves zebra meat through bars. The hellhound devours the zebra meat in a few massive bites, and they let out a contented growl. Open the door. What do you know? They're not aggro now. That's awesome. Door. Hey, there's zebra or zebra coyote. Let's move closer to coyote. I think there's enemies. That, yeah, it's all fucked. Just a dude in there with her. Or a chick, I suppose. This sucked last time because I had a shotgun, so I wound up hitting coyote a few times. I'll take on Alex. Shouldn't be a problem. Don't spray and pay. There we go. Depth complete. Wipe out the gang. Karma game three. Fuck yeah. Let's go talk to Coyote. What time you got here, Paco? Who's your friend? Right now I'm the guy saving your ass. I can see that, and I appreciate it. Wow, they fucked her up. Coyote, we need to get you back to the Union. Mrs. Kubota has the med lab in the basement. No. Coyote speaks with gritted teeth. No. I need to finish the other thing I came here for. I need to find something for Mr. Delilah first. A stash of gems. Delilah? I thought you said you'd never do any another deal with that man. Look, Paco. I need an excuse to come back here and settle some debts. Figured, figured I might as well get paid for it. Her voice is still strong, but her body is beginning to shake. Paco, help bring it back to the Union. I'll follow I'll follow into those gems for you to meet you there, yeah. Coyote looks as though she's about to argue, but says nothing. Come on, Coyote, let's go! 
got to check something real quickly here. i got to check my weapon. I want to make sure I don't fuck up my choice of skills. Yeah, this is an assault rifle. I thought I asked for a submachine gun. Uh, I bought a rifle. Fuck. I'll switch back to the submachine gun later. That was my own stupid fault. Oh, I can... Either way, I can still spend a few more karma here. I wanted to get my... Let's see. My ranged combat up a cost of four. And a submachine gun up by three. That's perfect. What's my decking at? It's a decking at three, so it would cost me four, as I thought. I can get my ESP. I'll get, get my ranged combat up first here. Overwatch is cool. You can basically use a turn to target an opponent. There we go. I'll tell you the ability I miss with it. Uh, I miss is, uh, where was it? It is with pistols. It's one of the abilities I, I had with some of my NPCs is really nice. But I can't find it, so it's all good. Oh well. No skin off my nose. So I gotta look for some gems now. Where they are. Probably down here somewhere. Okay, let's check. 25 million. Ooh, I'm witch. Yay! It's just old junk. Fits med kit. Yeah, I'll swap it for whatever. So I'm going to mid kit one. Okay, let's check. Over here. Nope. How about up here? Nope. Well, fuck. I know they're somewhere easy to find, I just have to, gotta remember where it was. Is that a bong or a hookah? I'm cool with either. Let's check in here, although there was nothing I could check before. Oh, there's a door down there, it's probably down there. Oh, there's still one, yeah. Now a health hound comes at me. Ooh, three damage. Oh, that'd be cool. Although, you know, I only have 30 hit points, so it's still. Ooh, 20 damage. I like, I like. Ah, it has minus one AP attack, too. If you run out of. If you reduce to zero AP, then you're actually stunned and can't move. Well, I think the AP loss only lasts to the end of the turn. There we go. And we'll check this. There we go. There's the small the gems. Now I can exit from here. That's actually an optional quest, but fuck it. Gives me a reward, so it's worth it. Return to the Union. Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door into the seamstress union. Heads raise, and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces, but manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a look, you see her arm isn't much more than a shred of meat and broken bones held together by tendons and burned skin. Ew! It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. Oh, Shadow Run. Okay, so it's probably not going to be killing for a while. I don't even know if I'll get to killing next video. 
Matt will continue here a little. Miss Kubota is tending by herself, and Paco Watt carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the Union. As soon as the boss lady lies, lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place goes quiet. Fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, Coyote is the color of wet spackle and there's something new in her eyes. Fear. This woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kabuta is her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kabuta. I had a run that went bad. Soka! I can see that. Your arm's a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It'll only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hi, Mrs. Kubota. My apologies again. Jerry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Downstairs? We haven't seen that. Yes, ma'am. And tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Mrs. Kubota, I can't afford a cyber arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you're healed, we'll discuss the concept of giddy, the debt de of honor. Now go. Bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. See, Mrs. Kubota's a good person. Alright. Her anger at Coyote's rashes slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her head to you. Tomo arigato, Swift Runner. That girl is precious to me. It is not often that we see acts like these in the Barrens. You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. But we both know that words are a mere error. Beyond my thanks, I offer you this remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. This looks like my kind of place. It is. You'll find there's more to the uni than meets the eye. It's true. Below us is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent cooperatives such as yourself. In it, you'll find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyber dock, and a secure place to rest when the dreck hits the fan, as they say. My, you're quite the entrepreneur. Indeed. Normally I require a percentage of the runner's income for the use of this facility. As I said, you're family now. Consider it around the house. The Pagain entrance played G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Sweet. Okay, so find a med bay, all optional, meet all black market vendors in the safe house. What a good optional quest. Okay, I don't need, can't talk to him now. I need him later, though. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, I gotta... I forgot, there's one more additional thing I can talk to Mrs. Kubota about. Get a quest done in the meantime. But I don't know if he shows up till after I get to this part. Also, maybe a service. Yeah, I don't really care about the... Is Delilah here? To, yeah, Mr. Dawes in the back bar. That's where we usually do business. Or he does business. Are there any Johnsons or fixes here tonight? In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Grass. He is often stage side. Van Grass is most often a receiver of found articles, but he occasionally has work. I could get into the role playing aspect more, but whatever. I just want to hurry this along and get to the next part quickly. <coughs> John Acclean. Yeah, so I thought Van Grass doesn't show up until after I come back up for some reason. What's Johnny Clean got to say? Does he have anything for sale yet? Okay, he just asked for about the safe house. It kind of looks like it's been here since the Union was built, but it doesn't look like anyone has played it in earnest for almost as long. So I'll play GF of Z. Slowly peck the notes out of the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase! You just send the stairs into the Union safe house. Fuck yeah. Okay. a storage spot here somewhere too. Whether I can access it now or not, I don't know. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Oh, I'm right at that. Yeah. 
and I want my machete. And this music game's got boss music. I really should get the soundtrack at some point. The Algernon. I think he just serves or sells magic. Past the bar, the edge of the safe house becomes somewhat dis indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. Yep. The man seems only half of his realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body pedals his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young elf, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon Half Dream. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best magical folk eye spells and fetishes for the conjuring of spirits. Let's see what you have just for shits and giggles. And spells, conjuring, she casting, consumables. Oh, all the fetishes they have for conjuration is right. It's Eric Mersman. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, not that you look bad now or anything, but each one will help you keep on the bright side of the ground. Take a look. Show me what you have. Yeah, so I thought I have pretty much everything. Oh, I'm running low on Nuyen, though. Holy shit. Ah, shit, I spoke with him. I I want to get a better deck if possible. Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight as they say, and a neatness this presents is only compounded by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin this li the line of his suit. When he speaks, the Ark's voice is soft and thoughtful, and he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker. Bunker Buster Gruberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in America for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I am your man. How can I help you? Take a look at what you got. Actually, before I do anything, I'm going to sell some shit. Don't need the... Don't need that. Don't really use grenades, ever. Don't need nitro. Or the grenade. Or the Decker clothing. I knew there was a way to sell, I just didn't know where it was. So what am I equipping again for? Beretta, it's damage 6, range 19, capacity 30. There's the, there we go, that's the better submachine gun. Anything else we have for some? If there's any other submachine guns. Okay, so I'll take the Beretta out and equip the Uzi 3. Confirm. And then we'll sell the Beretta. I gotta remember this on my main, too. Talk to David Fry the third, not as close as Philip Fry, but you know. Every inch of the teeth, uh, or tech alcove is teeth alcove, wow, is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this techno bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shot fool you. I can get my matrix hardware software that exists, or any matrix or hardware software that exists, sorry. And if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer, or any gear you need? Yeah, what do you have for sale? Oh, I'm gonna get the Renraku Craftwork 1. And let's see for magic 
programs. Programs are basically your magic spells. Oh wow, there's certainly a lot of them here. Well, I definitely want medics, level one. Heal yourself for a friendly target for one. level 1 is good. Blaster level 1 is good. And killer level 1 is good. That's going to take up a lot of my uh, a lot of my stuff, but unequip the Sony, equip the Ren Raku craft back. The craft back, yeah. Sorry, that was that was gay. I don't mean gay as in like homosexual either, I just mean gay or lame. I mean gay as in very homosexual sounding. How do we put those? There. See you later, alligator. I want to see overalls that you saw upstairs down here. Sitting over a workbench crammed with circuit boards, cables, and chips. Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. Get see you down here. I have to be a help, if I can be. Is it sure that you were part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he sure as hell not going to tell you anything about those days. If you're helping his, best let the subject drop. See you guys around, because I don't really care to learn about how decking works, because I fucking know already. Okay, maybe you can only... Okay, I guess, I guess you can only equip your spells in uh, later on when you're actually decking somewhere, which... That's the one, I, the one complaint I've heard about this game that I agree with is that decking isn't used enough. At the same time, I'm kind of glad it isn't, I suppose. Whoa, she's a little demon on her shoulder. Make it quick, I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Null Sheen, you should be okay now. We'll see, it's gonna take years of to work off this deck. Okay, folks, I'm gonna have to ask y'all to sit in the waiting area, watch some trivet or something. This young lady and I have work to do. Thank you. Some questions first. Swift, Swift Runner, can't you see she's in pain? Do you see that arm tremor? I have to operate now. Okay, Coyote. Okay, Coyote, let's take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote. I earned this face by being stupid. I'm gonna keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. With one swift move, she she dies. Ugh. Tongue tied there. She sinks a syringe into Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Before I talk to Coyote, I'm gonna go talk to the doctor so I remember before I forget. In Shadowrunner circles, the term doctor is often used quite literally to, to describe any saw bones with a needle and thread. But in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipped medical suite, complete with shamanistic fetishes. This is six world medicine of the highest caliber. The doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely, if not for the sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. Null Sheen. Now fixing up her arm, that was a piece of work. Surprisingly routine, as it so happens. She knows you all by eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find a full-service med band or a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. 
For the purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no better place to set up a practice. I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you with anything? Let's see your cyberware. I don't know if there's anything worthwhile here, but... Plus three a hit, yeah, that's not bad. It's all expensive though, and it lowers my essence. I guess this is already minus one, I think, because or, I think it's minus half because of the data jack. There we go. Complete that optional quest, which isn't very isn't necessary, but you know. Let's talk to Coyote. <coughs> Coyote looks better and worse than you last saw her. All the gaping holes are plug men, and she's sporting a shiny new cyber arm. Now that the adrenaline is worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good. Morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science, combined with Doc Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost as good as new. Better, really. You ready for some questions now? She flashes you a puzzled look. What kind of questions? About Sam Watts. Sam Watts? What about him? <coughs> Sam's dead. Holy dreck, Sam! I can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? Tell me about Sam. I hear you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. No accounting for taste, Sam made some bad jokes. Not when he was sober. He was chill. And funny. I guess I knew him the best of everyone here. Sorry he's gone. You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? It was a pretty average night. Regular crowd as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him? Met him. He's a charmer too. She bites her lower lip. I like gingers. Anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few, well, Jake was having a few, Sam was tossing them back, but good. Eventually he got loud, the way he sometimes did when he mixed drinking and who knows what, and Mrs. Kubota wanted him ejected. Mr. Cluey wasn't around, can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out the back, into the alley, and that's the last time I saw Sam. You see, he got loud, do you remember what he was saying? She thinks, standard Sam Drek, how he grew up rich and didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother. How he loved his mother. That's pretty pathetic stuff. Do you have any enemies? She thinks, enemies? That's hard to say. Sam party hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none that I'm aware of. Where did Sam live? On the streets, mostly. He'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop on her couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash on the, one of the bunks. He used one the night before I saw him last. How bad was his drinking? If it was just a drinking, it would have been bad. But Sam wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro. Whatever he can get his hands on. It wasn't always like that, but once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Sam was sick? Dying, didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You, you could just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It'd be hard to be drink. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good, even. Did you say how he got better? He said his mum helped him out. Never said how, though. Thanks, Coyote. Now I need you two to do something for me. What do you need, babe? I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the, the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run at it when I recover. Oh, so I'm not even going to tell her that I got the gems. That's funny. Okay. Oh, let's, uh... Investigate Sam's bunk. I forgot about that. The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an old photograph that has seen a lot of wear. The image on the photo. Picture of a blonde boy and girl, both about age 14, sitting on a dock on the edge of the lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Check the back. Written in a woman's hand are the words, Sam and Jessica, Lake Samoth State Park, Summer 2040. Pocket this photo, never know it will come in handy. Search Sam's bunk. 
I mean, it did. Cool. So, is my other objective? Oh, yeah. Deliver the stones of Wizard of the Lion. There's Delilah. Yeah, so I thought he wasn't. He was out there until Coyote asked you to talk to him for whatever freaking reason. Mr. Delilah looks small and tough, with an untraceable shoddy on his back and a heavy vest under his trench coat. He's got the air of someone who gets things done and occasionally does them himself. He might be an ex-runner, one of the rare ones smart enough to move over to management when he felt his reflexes slowing down. What do you want? You Delilah? Yeah, what's it to you, asshole? Can't you see I'm busy here? I've come to conclude your business with Coyote. At the mention of Coyote, he finally gives you his full attention. Why didn't you say so? Coyote is late, and my client's getting anxious. Where is she? Downstairs, trying to go, trying out a new arm. Your run went south for her. No kidding. Hmm. Huh. Well, whatever. She's tough. She'll pull through. So who are you two? The guys have got, the guys have got your goods. What difference does it make? Don't make no difference to me. What's the, where's the stones? Hold back the best stone and best stone and give him the rest. In an instant, there's a jeweler's scope on his eye. Moving quickly through what appear to be the most valuable stones, he stops when he finds what appears to be an ordinary pebble inscribed with Hebrew characters. That's the one. He pockets it. Okay, you did the job, but you're late. And Coyote knows him that in this case, late equals no payment. But I'm feeling magnanimous tonight, so you guys can keep the gem you already pocketed. You're good. Mr. Delilah looks you up and down, takes you all in. Listen, you look like the sort of man who might run a crew of your own one day. Might need a little talent. When that happens, you come to me. I'll set you up. He dismisses you with a wave. Looks like you impressed him. I know a fence for those gems. Van Graz, follow me. Okay, this is you know, Delilah's kind of an asshole, but... Hey, he gave me work. So let's go talk. Now Van Graz, you ready? slick dwarf looking motherfucker. Van Grass is busy talking on his comm link, checking a heads up display, and monitoring to a runner or motioning to a runner saying nearby, all at the same time. He's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Van Grass, make it good. Biz is quick. Talk to me. You can see you're a busy man. He nods his head. That's right, and so I wouldn't bother you if I hadn't come into possession of these rare stones. You have his attention. Rare stones, huh? Let me see these rare stones. You hear the servos in Van Graz's cyber eye whir as the magnifying lens slips into position. He bends his head over the stones for two seconds, maybe less. Huh, where'd you get this drek? A gumball machine? I'll give you a thousand for them. Uh, if only I had the right etiquette, or better, or more charisma. More, more better charisma. <laughs> Done. Give me your cred stick. A thousand. A thousand millions, a thousand million. And what was my next? Oh yeah, return to Coyote. Man, hurry up and hit an auto save point. This fucking run is getting long. Okay. You're back. I think the highlights of the Wolves game will be on soon. Want to take a load off and watch it with me? You know someone named Jessica? Her brow furrows, no? Why? That's the name of Sam's sister. Jessica Watts? Yeah, he mentioned her once. Didn't sound like they got along that well. Your comlink ch uh, chips in the screen shows a smiling face of Officer Aguirre. If he's smiling, it must be about money. Talk. We've got another Ripper murder. This one at the NTSB investigation facility down in the docks. You owe me for this. Put it on my tab. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. The image on your PDA dissolves the cash or the call ends cash. Another Ripper murder? Where? The docks. I've got to go. Okay, listen. I want to help. You dragged me out of the Royale before. Something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off. And Sam was my friend. You head to the docks, and I'll see if I can track down Sam's sister, Jessica. She may be able to help us. See you when I get back. There. Now I can take the cab and auto. Freaking auto save. Yeah, this 
Delilah doesn't have anything for me yet, but it'll come in handy later. That's where I want to go. Take a cab to the South Seattle docks. Conform. I don't know why I keep doing the Homestar voice today. Yes, Thor. So. The South Seattle docks. Leaving the seamstresses union behind, you head to the docks. The Ripper killed Sam. Maybe he or she slipped up with his latest victim. Left some useful evidence. Only one way to find out. South Seattle's your typical industrial area. Grit, grime, and gray. The rain doesn't help matters any. Layers of dirt mixed with abandoned wooden pallets repurposed in the makeshift furniture for the day workers. Garbage collects in the gutters of the broken down street. Disreputable is this district's middle name. Your destination, the National Transportation Safety Board Warehouse, is located on a small strip of dock towards the less maintained end of the waterfront. Despite the presence of those who linger in such places, it's quiet as you approach the gate. And now it's going to let me save. Yay, autosave, away! Alright, so this is where I cut this video off. Hope you enjoyed watching it, although it was very long. At least I got to kill a bunch of shit, right? Right? That's something! That's about time, I've been waiting to kill more than more than one or two guys. Uh, the music that I used today is uh, like a piece of industrial black metal. It's uh, The Snuff That Dreams Are Made Of by Dode Heimsgaard off their awesomely titled album Super Villain Outcast. Not their best album, but at that point their their main vocalist Aldrin had left and was replaced by uh, folks from the band, uh, I think it's Void? Or maybe, yeah, I think it's Void. Not as good, not as good as Aldrin was, but yeah, still, the music still rocks. All right, well, next when we come, when we come back next time, we've got more murder to investigate and hopefully more shit to kill. Have yourself a good day.